Welcome everybody to this tutorial. Today we're going to be going over how to do a screen replacement in Blender. Now, before we get into it, I got to this result that, that you see right here in my last tutorial, which talked about how to remove trackers. So we started off with this result where we just put trackers on the screen and then we tracked those trackers and then we use those to subtract out the alpha. And finally, we use the inpaint node to go ahead and get rid of those trackers. And now you can see that we have a good looking result here. There's a little bit of an issue, but not much. So if you want to uh, see how to do that, you can go ahead and check out my previous tutorial. I'll put it up in the I card in the top right hand corner and then I will also put the link in the description down below. So we're going to go ahead and start from here. Okay so the first thing that we need to do is we need something to replace the screen with. Now I went ahead and uh, let me go ahead and open up my image. So as you can see here I've opened up my image and this is just a scroll shot of the Blender website. It took it a little while ago on my phone and that way I knew that everything was the correct aspect ratio. So now that we have this image open, we need to go back and do a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is go back to our motion tracking workspace. So I'm gonna go ahead and select three trackers and I'm selecting these three trackers because they're all kind of in the square that would be this screen. And then I'm going to go ahead and come over here to my tracking workspace and here where it says solve i'm going to create a plane track and it says nope you need four points so i'm going to just go ahead and select this other point here and create a plane track and there we go so now we have a plane track if i go back into my compositing workspace and i hit shift a and add in a plane track plane track to form and then i use my footage here and and connect that up and then I look at this, you can see, oh, I have to also open up the footage here. There we go. And then open up the camera and the plane track. There it is. So you can see I put my footage here and our, our plane track is a square. And so what's going on is this footage right here is now inside of this square on this phone. But what we can do is just go ahead and place this right where it should be. Place these points on the corners of the phone. Go ahead and spend some time, make sure you're getting it right. Okay, there we go. So now if I go back to compositing, and this time I'm gonna just take my image that I want to be on the screen and stick that into the image socket. You can see that when that updates, bam, we have a good looking plane track. And then to really look at this, I can hit Shift A and hit search for an alpha over node and just drop that in between the inpaint node and my render node and then connect up the plane track node to the bottom socket. And then if I control shift left mouse button click, you can see that we have a good looking plane track over, over our footage. Now, in order to make this look good, we have to do three things. First is we have to scale out our image because it's a long image. I just created a really long image because in this footage I scroll up and down. I needed the image to be the length of how I would scroll. The second thing we need to do is we need to add our reflections back over. It looks like the screen is on top because right now this looks pretty fake. And the third thing we need to do is create a mask for my thumb to mask my thumb out. So let's go ahead and do those three things. The first thing we're going to do is hit shift A and add in a transform node. In this transform node, I'm going to put in between my background image node and the plane track node. And then I'm just going to add one more node and make that a scale node. I'm going to use this transform node to move in the Y. I can move this image, let's say 15 degree degrees up. You can see it shift a little bit. I'm sorry, 15 pixels. But I can also scale in the X and the Y. So you can see if I scale this up, 12, maybe 15. No, 15 is too much. 13. There we go. And now I can use this Y node 
to go back and forth to scroll back and forth so if I say 500 pixels you can see that I've scrolled up and if I say negative 500 pixels you can see that the image scrolls down this is really the beauty of nodes is you can just stick a node here before your plane track and then you don't have to worry about how it's controlled it's it's just ready to go the other thing i'm going to do is click on motion blur here just because there is a little bit of motion blur as the phone moves in my hand now one problem i ran into is if you look at the background image we have this top part of the phone and the bottom back buttons so i went ahead and just took a normal version of the phone a normal screenshot so i took a normal screenshot of the phone and then i just stretched it out to the width and the height of my background image and what that is going to allow me to do is hit shift a and add in an alpha over and i'm going to place that alpha over in between my plane track and my transform and then stick this right here so that i have my buttons over my image now if i look at my plane track i have my buttons right here and they also don't move so if i make this negative 1000 you can see that the back moves the image moves but the buttons don't okay so now that we have that all set up let's go ahead and plus the re reflections back over let me just move this over and i'm going to add in a mix node and stick that in between my alpha over and my render nodes okay and then I'm going to grab my inpaint node and the output from the inpaint I'm going to stick into the or the over input on my mix node and then I'm going to change the blending node to add and now you can see two things the first one is I need to change my planar track here to fit the entire screen you can see the reflection on the screen so let me come back to my motion tracking here. We, if we want more reflections on this screen, we actually need to darken it a little bit. So I'm gonna hit Shift A and grab color correction node and I'm gonna stick that after the alpha over, but before the plane track. And now if we take the gain and we make it something like 0.8, you can see that that darkens the screen just a little bit and it allows the reflections to come back through. I might actually go a little bit more, let's say 0.6. So now that we have this, I'm just gonna save real quick and let's go back to our motion tracking where we have our thumb. So I'm gonna go to my mask workspace and I'm gonna add in a new mask and call this thumb underscore mask. And I'm just going to control left click and add in a mask for my thumb. And I'm gonna do my best to stay on the inside of where my thumb is and as you can see, I've gone ahead and just clicked, control left clicked, and then I can Alt C to close that. Now I can go back and grab each point and hit V, and I'm gonna say vector aligned single. Okay, then I'm just gonna hit L on my keyboard, and I'm gonna turn on re the record button here in the timeline, and then I'm going to just hit I in order to add in a point, and now, I'm just going to go through real quick and scroll back a few frames and I can just move this around. Okay, so you can see here that I have a little bit of a problem and that is that parts of my thumb that are outside when I start masking then come inside. So what I tend to do is I tend to just leave this shape the same and then I'll go to a place where that I need a new mask and I just click here add a new mask layer and this way I can add a new mask in just like this I find this to be quicker alrighty so that's just what I'm gonna do for the masking obviously you could spend a lot of time going through and masking everything out and I, you can see I've even shortened the frame range from the original 190 frames down to what 15 20 frames so if I go ahead and just go to the starting point here of our frame range I can take our footage and hit shift a and come here and find uh, another alpha over node and i'm going to go ahead and take the i'm going to take the output of the in paint node in paint node and put it in the bottom socket of the alpha over and then i'm going to take the output of the mix and put it in the top socket and then then i'm going to hit shift a and there we go i can just grab a mask node here first of all if i connect this up you can see what we get i've connected this up but 
and you can see that we lose our planar track. But if I go ahead and select the thumb mask in from our mask list and then input this into the factor, that a couple of things happen. The first is if I take this out, watch these windows here. When I put this back in, all of a sudden those windows get washed out and that's because of this additive layer down here. You can even see that our thumb mask is darker than the rest of our hand. So to fix that, we just take this plane node, or this plane output from our planar track, and stick that into the factor of the add node. And that will make sure that all of these, all of these adjustments just end up within our planar track. Okay, so there you go. That is how you do a screen replacement in Blender. To export it, you just come over here to your export settings, and you go to the output and choose a directory. And then you can change the file format to whatever you want. Uh, make sure you set your resolution and make sure your FPS is set correctly as well. And then you just go ahead and hit Control F12 in order to export it. You should get something like this. So anyway, I thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I really appreciate it. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I hope that all of you guys are staying safe out there.